Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Here we go once again every two weeks with the ex-wife, uh, with the uh, uh, proprietor of uh, TimeGoesBy.net. Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Good morning. Good morning. And, and we should sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronnie. Happy birthday to you. But I have to do it a second time Happy because I'm washing my hands at the same time. Happy birthday to oh, you. Stop. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> You're supposed to. That's, that's the, uh, the thing. You're supposed to, what, uh, uh, sing it twice. And while That's you're watching, it's approximately yes. yes. Yeah, twenty. Yeah. There's some place online I ran into that has a whole list of other songs we would all know if you get tired of "Happy Birthday," which I'm pretty tired of. Yeah, yeah. Well, "Inagata Devita" is not one of them because that goes on for <laughs> forever. Uh, so, how you doing? You weren't feeling so well last time we talked. I'm okay. I'm okay. Did you get better? Oh. Well, no, I mean, two weeks ago, I was really sick, um, and I had a fever and uh, body pains and, you know, stuff, sick, uh, and I talked with the doctor, I don't know if I'd talked to the doctor when we spoke, but I spoke on the phone with them, and they, and oh, and I had some trouble breathing, I was using oxygen at home, so, you know, that kind of scares you a little. A little <laughs> you know? bit, I would say that's uh, concerning. Pardon me? I would say that's concerning. Yes, but the doctor... Um, said that he didn't think it was, but if my breathing got any more difficult to call 911 and go to the emergency room, well, let me tell you, that'll get you well really soon. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> nobody wants to go to an emergency room. And, uh, you know, I was two days, two and a half days of really, really sick in bed. And then it started to get better, and I'm much better now. So I'm, I'm well. Maybe and it the maybe just thought that it was... He said, you know, at any given moment, there are tons of other bugs we don't know anything about that people get all the time, cause runny noses or a little bit of flu right, and that right, sort of thing. Right. And he doesn't believe it was corona. And, you know, according to what everybody's telling us, I don't think I could, with my lungs, I could live through corona. So it must have been something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, in any event, you're you're better now, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we We're... Sitting here in the middle of the most infected city in America, New York, and it's just, you know, uh, it's strange. It, to begin with, at night, it's unearthly quiet. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, you could hear a pin do, drop. Do, do, do you go out and take part in the applauding at 7 p.m.? No. Why? Well, I didn't know there was applauding at 7 p.m. In New York City, yes, to applaud all the healthcare workers and other people that are helping. I hadn't heard about that. Oh, it's all over the internet. Well, maybe it's over the internet, but it ain't happen. I don't hear it happening here at seven o'clock. I don't hear applauding outside. Uh, but it's it, you could hear a pin drop, and up until a few nights ago, the only predominant sound you heard were constant sirens. You know. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. Yeah, yeah. and and I, in the last couple of like last night, I noticed an absence of si of, of sirens. So, you know, that's that's my sign that things are maybe getting a little better, you know. But Well, except that New York had more deaths in the past 24 hours than they ever have before. Well, they say that's because all the people that had been on ventilators for more than the time that you can stay on a ventilator had finally gone and died. And so uh, what that peak was was maybe something that happened several weeks ago when we first put them on the ventilators. And that was the result now. So that, that they think that's the reason why. It's not that things have gotten worse. It's just we've reached this peak. So who knows, you know. But uh, it's it's starting to drive me a little batty. You know, I'm, going, I'm getting hey, stir you know, crazy. I'm with the people who say things like um, the blitz went on in London for several months. And people every night were down in the subways or the other th underground. Mm -hmm. And they did it. And this one is really kind of grabs at your heart. 
and frankly in a closet for two years. I don't have any right to complain about anything. No, you know, you're you're absolutely right about that. I mean, I'm very fortunate. I have an apartment that's 2,500 square feet, and if you're going to get cabin fever, it's going to be very large cabin fever. Uh, but still, after, what, four weeks of not going out? I went out twice, and that was very quickly. Uh, but you know, four weeks of that already, and you start getting squirrely. You know, you start getting a little weird. And uh, I, I feel sorry for people who only have, like, you know, a studio apartment and have to be stuck inside that studio apartment. It's like being, it means may as well put an ankle bracelet on yourself, you know? It's like being in a cell. Um, Alex. Yeah. You're not in an ICU. Well, no, no, I, you know, we can always say things could be worse, but what I'm saying is things as they are for us here in New York. I mean, the, the, everybody's living in fear. Everybody's living with uh, not going not out and not having social contacts. I mean, there are a whole bunch of elements that we are, are faced with here in New York that we're not usually used to being faced with. Alex, it's not New York. It's everywhere. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I disagree with you. Here in New York, it is worse than it is anywhere else. To be home? No, the situation. I guess I'm confused. I thought you were talking about not liking being home. Oh, no, no. That That's, listen, uh, 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 I, I'm staying home for a couple of reasons. Number one, my age. Uh, and and what might be compromising conditions, as you would probably feel the same way, uh, and also because I feel a certain sense of patriotism not to go outside. Patriotism? Yes, because I'm helping my fellow man, you know, uh, by not going out, by maintaining my distance, by doing what our governor says we should do. Um, uh, I think anybody, I have one guy I know who has a business of, uh, he has a carpet business, and he's still laying carpet in California. And I'm going, why are you doing that? And he says, well, I'm not sick. I don't have a temperature. And I said, you could be asymptomatic and be passing it on to other people. You know, the job is, job one is to stay as far away from other people, outside of people who already live in your home, like in the, my case, Marjorie, um, and it, it's it's our duty to, to 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 help nip this thing because this social distance is starting to show uh, a positive effect, at least here in New York. Uh, but we've been hit with it on an on a on an epic scale. I mean, compared to any other city in the United States, we're ten times more than any other. Uh, any other state in the in the United States, so it's it's scary, okay, at the very least. Uh, and I had to, for instance, I had to go have a, a CT scan um, that was, I had to have after a month after my seed implant, and um, uh, they said just come on up to Mount Sinai and follow. And I said no way. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to Mount Sinai. They said, okay, we can hold it off for three months. They said, will you go get a blood, can you go get a blood test? And I checked into it, and I said, yeah, I can walk down to uh, one of these labs. It's in the neighborhood about eight blocks away. And I said, I can probably keep distance. And then I got wrote them back and said, I'm even frightened to do that. And they said, okay, wait, wait a couple of weeks till this thing goes over to the other side. So... Uh, I, I, I don't even want to go out for stuff like that, you know, because I, I just I see going to a lab as being or a hospital as not being the best places to go at this point. Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it scared me enough. And I don't usually scare by this stuff. This stuff doesn't scare me usually. You never had any stuff like this before. What are you talking about? Uh, let's see here. Have we? No, the only thing in our lifetime. The only thing that was comparable to it in our lifetime was didn't affect you or I, and that was AIDS. Uh, AIDS was pretty much, I would say, if you were gay, that was a pretty scary time to be living in. You know, 
Um, but uh, so, how is everything in Oregon? Oregon's uh, actually sending us some ventilators, or is that yes. why? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, because you you don't seem to be having the problem. That well, we're just later. I mean, I, no places. It's not that every that, that you guys have it worse. You just got it first. I don't think that the condition that New York is in in terms of numbers of cases and deaths, I don't think that, I mean, there's just the numbers because of the size of the yeah. city, but per capita, I don't know that it's not going to happen to every place. Other places are further behind. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I, that right now we're not using those, and so the governor decided to ship them off to somewhere that could really, really use them. And since there's no central organization for the small number of ventilators and other things that are needed. The governors are working together, and and I mm -hmm. think they're doing the best they well, can. It, it, I mean, I think yeah. Cuomo's terrific. This was a terrific thing for our governor in Oregon to do, and mm -hmm. it's happening with other governors. And, um, and I just think it was, it kind of got the ball rolling of doing that kind of thing when she did that. When she announced it, I think it was Friday. Yeah, well, the, the, you know, Cuomo's idea was a very solid one, and that is we need them, send them. When we don't longer need them, we're going to send them to you, and then we'll send them to the next hot spot, and then they'll send it to the next hot spot. In other words, let's all work as a nation. Let's not work as, you know, 50 separate states who just are all hoarding their, uh, their ventilators that they might not need at this moment. So I, I, th I think that was a very good plan. I think it was nothing our president would ever think of, but, you know, a good plan. Uh, our president thinks you just can take a pill and solve the whole problem, a pill that will give people heart attacks. <laughs> so, you know, he's, I think he's going to appoint himself Surgeon General at some point here. You know. Well, I, 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 I try not to. I, I, I can't think last time he said anything that we needed to know in terms of the virus. Um, he says he's been doing a lot of other things that I can't imagine how a president should have all the time that he has to be firing all these people. In the last two or three da days, he's hired, he's fired five or six people, it seems to me. Yeah. I mean, the press secretary, who never held a press conference, yeah, all, right. uh, she's gone. Uh, another in inspector general is fired. Mm -hmm. uh, he had something to do with firing the captain of that boat where there were so many sick sailors. And it, how would you even have time to think about these things? <laughs> you would think like you would think on. that your entire concentration would be on this epidemic, you know. And um, uh, I also like the fact that he ta he he takes claim for things that he had nothing to do with, like the opening of the Jacob Javits Center as a hospital. That was Cuomo's doing. But he says, oh, and we're sending all this. Him. We opened up the there. He acts like it's him. And to be fair, he sent in, I think it's some military force. I don't know if it's the National Guard or yeah. Army or whomever, but medical people from the armed services. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that can't come from Cuomo. That has to come from a president. Right. So, you know, don't. It, there's so many things he could be, you know, painted with a black brush. Let's not do the ones we that he actually did. Uh, <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> should we, we shall try. We should try and encourage him. Well, you know what they said though is the most terrible thing, is these governors feel they have to pay obedience to him in order to get anything out of him. They have to compliment him. They have if they say anything bad about him, they won't get the stuff they need. You know, including, including Dr. Burks. Yeah, yeah. Um, after she did that with him, I just, I just don't listen to her anymore either. You know? Right. I don't know what I can trust out of anybody's mouth. Anymore. Well, I have a nickname for her, Scarfy. She's always oh, wearing the scarf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That that's like a guy who thinks a comb over is going to prevent people from thinking he's going bald. You know, well, no, I mean, women wear scarves. There's, I mean, she just does it more than most women. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, how, how do you feel about Fauci? I mean, uh, he, he, 
I, when I watch him, I think he just wants to burst out at some moment and just say, shut the hell up. But then he doesn't. Well, you know, none of us can get inside somebody else's head. Um, I think that, was it yesterday or the day before, that he wouldn't let him, Fauci, answer a question yeah. from one of the, and then attack the journalist who asked the question to. And uh, yeah. Fauci tries. He tries really hard without being the ass kisser that some of the others are. Yeah. And it's an, I couldn't follow that. I couldn't do that successfully. He's done it quite successfully. I mean, I just would have lost it at some point. Um, and he's just, ama <laughs> he's just amazing that he somehow, you know, he kind of just lets the president talk and then he does, until, unless the president doesn't uh, allow him to. And then he, he speaks his piece, whatever it is, even if it contradicts the president. And maybe Trump understands that Fauci has become so trusted in these past few weeks that it would be a major debacle for Trump if he fired Fauci from his team. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fauci is the one person that everybody listens to. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's like he, he does this tap dance which I don't, I wouldn't be capable of doing because it would just drive me crazy. And that tap dance is like when Trump gets up and says, "These pills, I'm going to take one myself. Everybody should take these pills. The government just bought 92 million of these pills, right? The chlora, whatever it is. And um, uh, you know, maybe it might work, but most people think that the evidence is anecdotal and it, it there's no proof that it, it is a cure all. And secondly. It, it is essential for people. I've forgotten the other one, lupus. but because I, but loop, but there's another yeah. two besides lupus, and that because apparently doctors, because of Trump, doctors are prescribing this drug to all kinds of people, so that now there's a shortage, and there are people that the drug really works on their disease, like lupus, right. as you said, right. It, it not only works in the case of lupus, they have to take it on a rather continual basis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So here we've created another shortage. And because he sits up there and says something which has no basis in fact, and even if he felt it were true, he should have kept his mouth shut till we knew the evidence was in. You know. You know, there's been there have been reports that I don't think are well corroborated yet. This morning, this is Tuesday for people looking at this that Trump is connected financially to a company that makes that drug. Really? I don't know if that's true. I, I've, I've seen a couple of reports. I don't think they're corroborated yet. Wow. Uh, if that were true, that, that there's another, there's another uh, uh, impeachment for you. <laughs> you I, know? I mean, but, but it was thing. just totally irresponsible on his part. And when he did it originally, they said it was irresponsible, and then he doubled up on it, you know? I mean, you know, it, yeah. when you, do you watch Cuomo? Oh, every day, every, every day, every day. It's like our, it's like our go-to show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and... I um, imagine, and it's not difficult to speak as he does. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That yeah. he tells the truth as difficult as some of the truths are, he tells them that way. Yeah. When he, I think today and yesterday, talked about maybe, maybe, maybe the curve is flattening a little bit in New York, but he also makes it clear that we don't know that yet. This could be, just be a one day blip. Mm -hmm. And treats us as. Um, adults, which yeah. we are. Yeah. yeah, and he acts like one. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's um. Uh, he it's, he he has uh, gained a you know I was I was on the fence about him, on a lot of things, but I got to tell you this has sold me on him as a leader. I mean he knows how to lead. He knows how to lead by example. He knows how to lead by, by doing what it takes to calm people down. You know, I'm surprised. Uh, there was one person that handled a crisis like this pretty well, and that was Rudy Giuliani when uh, we had 9-11 a 
for whatever I think of Rudy Giuliani, he wrote the textbook on how you comport yourself while something like this is going on. Why Trump never went to him for, you know, advice on how to handle this is beyond me. Because he had the guy that wrote the book on it. I don't I mean I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean you remember you remember you remember Ju an You remember Giuliani getting up there every day, talking to the public, calming them down, saying what they were doing. You didn't feel he was lying to you. You know, the same thing that Cuomo's doing now. Uh, and, and Cuomo is just, I, we, we look forward to it every day. And then I, I call the thing in the evening, the Trump comedy hour. You I don't know, look at it. Uh, you know, it, it he hasn't said anything yet that made a difference in my life or understanding what's going on. So I don't see the point. Yeah. Well, he, he is the perfect example of if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. And he's doing a bad job of faking it. He can't read a speech. He can't read what's on a piece of paper in front of him. I mean, how are we supposed to have any confidence in that? You know? And then Nobody if the does, except his his you know, his forty percent of the of America, I guess, forty plus percent that think he's doing a great job. Yeah, but then also, I mean, uh, <laughs> he then goes out and lashes out at the press who's there. When somebody from the press starts asking a question, he immediately interrupts them before they can finish asking the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, he, it, he, and then he talks about them being disrespectful to him. I mean, come on, you, you get what you give out. I mean, <coughs> it, it, we're, in a time like this, we need somebody better. We need somebody who can, you know. We, aren't, we don't have it, so, you know, it's... What's the phrase some people have used? They go to war with the, with the army you have, you not, have. The, you, not the army you wish you had. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you know. And I, but I just, I just, I, I really, I feel uh, really let down by this president. Uh, I mean, it's fully what I expect out of him, but I, I, I feel let down by him. I, I imagine that at a time like this, he would somehow show something. And he's shown nothing but the worst kind of leadership you could have in this crisis. And I, I was thinking the other day, what would Obama have been, done in this situation? Uh, would he have been able to handle this? Well, what the first thing you can know that is he wouldn't have held an election rally every afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I kind of, I, I, I don't really. I don't know. I, can't, I guess I'm trying to say, and I, I don't know how to say it politely, as I don't really care what Obama might have done. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he's not the president. Yeah. But um, if it, I don't know. You know, it's, it's that there are a lot of, there are a lot of examples of presidents having behaved quite wonderfully in terrible circumstances in history. Right. Right. And um, and and the the obvious comparisons, you know, Roosevelt in World War Two, and um, uh, yeah, I I don't know. It uh, it's difficult. It's difficult. Well, there are people who know how to lead a country in the time of crisis. FDR was a perfect example of one who could. He, two crises. One was the, the Depression, followed by the war. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, another case would be in England, uh, Winston Churchill knew how to, by the mere force of his own personality, rally people and make them feel better and make them feel they were, had a common purpose. This president does none of that. And this is... You know, you know what you're saying is very important. Um, is that we don't have someone, any of those people, those historical ones that we're talking about, would have known how, what to say to us to make it okay to stay in even when we're chafing at having to do that. Right. And to keep reminding us and make us feel um, that we're contributing for doing that. I and mean, one of the big problems I have is I have no way to contribute. Yeah. And um, and I think, you know, this morning there are headlines of grocery people dying 
And I remember when I was in the grocery store, it's been a week ago now, last time, um, and I don't need to go for another week, um, uh, that they weren't wearing masks. They had done a bunch of other things around the store. Mm -hmm. But I was concerned about them. They're see I'm seeing them for 30 minutes. They're there all day with God knows how many people mm -hmm. coming through, you know. Well, I have to say yeah. that I was really... Uh, you know, the, the, the people I know who work in my supermarket, we kept our six feet difference. We waved and said hi to each other and exchanged pleasantries and how is your family, that sort of thing. And then there was a point where I was standing on tiptoe trying to get something off the top shelf. And a woman come up who wanted something on the bottom shelf near me and leaned right into me. What? What are people thinking? I... I just don't what about it. social distancing? Don't you understand? Hey, you know what? We've run out of time. Okay. You know, a lot to talk about here. Uh, so are you staying primarily indoors? Not primarily, just yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the, I've, I've worked it out that I can go to the grocery store every couple of weeks. I'm, I'm having, I wrote about it yesterday, I'm having an ice cream Jones now that we're getting sunshine outside um, and I almost left the house to go buy some which I would have done in the past right and I thought, oh wait a minute lockdown <laughs> you gotta stay home and so yeah I'll, I'll wait <laughs> yeah Marjorie gets uh, gets up at, she's gone to the market on a couple of occasions because she gets up early so she goes at seven o'clock in the morning when they open up she made a big mistake on Monday she went to it on Monday, and there was nothing on the shelves. No, there's nothing there. You have to wait till later in the day and later in the week. Yeah, right. Um, right. Because there haven't been deliveries, and there are haphazard deliveries as it is now. If you go, they, they set aside, you know, this early, early 7 a.m. thing for old people. Yeah. Well, they haven't cooked the cooked chickens yet. They haven't put out the produce. They haven't put out the meat. You know, there's nothing there you need to have exactly. them fill the dairy counter for milk and so on. Hey, we better call this quits because I got to get to my citizen panel. But I want to thank you so much once again and a happy, happy birthday. Thank you. This is number 79, right? Yes, I never expected to be here. Well, you're here and you're still kicking and you better. Otherwise, I'm going to be mad as hell. Well, Ladies and, <laughs> we'll worry about that then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, timegoesby.net is her blog, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.